This unassuming nerd is actually a masterful escape driver. However, when Ahis goes sideways and the villains target his girlfriend, he's thrust into a life or death battle. A red car pulls up in front of a bank, revealing the crew inside one by one. Each passenger has the look of a robber, including a woman who could easily steal hearts, and the driver, a young man aptly named Baby, seems innocuous. As Baby queues up a track on his iPod, the crew exits the car and heads into the bank, armed with gear from the trunk. Inside the car, Baby delivers a one-man show completely absorbed in his music, but the sudden sight of a police car snaps him back to the urgent reality. Peering into the bank, he notices his team wrapping up, signaling it's almost time to flee. Preparing to drive off, Baby watches as his crew dashes from the bank to the car. He executes a swift reverse followed by a sharp turn, evading the police who are now hot on their heels. Despite being chased by five police cars, Baby remains composed, adeptly navigating through traffic as if he were in a video game. In a clever maneuver, Baby aligns himself between two other red cars on a highway. He subtly switches lanes under a bridge, misleading a police helicopter tracking him. This confusion allows them to escape. They'd abandon the red car in a parking lot, switch their attire and vehicle, and then casually drive away. Subsequently, Baby strolls with his earphones, the bounce in his step reflecting a successful job. At a coffee shop, he picks up four coffees, returning to his crew as they divide the loot. Although Griff continues to pester Baby, the latter receives a portion of the money from Doc, who promises Baby that one more job will set him free. Back home, Baby stashes his cash in a hidden compartment. Observed by his deep foster father, Joe, after inquiring about dinner, Joe watches a news report labeling Baby as a robbery suspect. This prompts a tense conversation about the origin of the money, with Baby reassuring Joe of his imminent exit from this dangerous life. That night, Baby crafts music from a recorded conversation, reflecting on the words, was he slow? Pleased with his creation, he adds the tape to his collection, contemplating his future in music, he avoids a tape labeled Mom, which reminds him of a tragic accident, instead choosing his old iPod for comfort. Later, at Boo's Diner, Baby is captivated by Deborah, a waitress singing a song with his name in the lyrics. His fascination is so intense that he fails to notice her approaching him. Their conversation reveals mutual desires for freedom and the open road, hinting at a deep connection. The chef clears his throat loudly to interrupt the moment. Baby compliments Deborah's beauty as she departs, clearly smitten. She hums the same tune while leaving, and when Baby inquires about the song, he soon finds himself purchasing the record and joyfully dancing to it at home. Joe, though unable to hear, sees the joy the girl brings to Baby and signals his approval. The interruption comes with a call to action from Doc about a new job. At the new he site, Baby is introduced to the crew, Eddie Nonal, JD, and Bats. The crew questions Baby's constant use of music, and Doc explains Baby's tinnitus, a constant ringing in his ears due to a childhood accident. Bats, curious about Baby, learns from Doc about Baby's impressive driving skills from a young age, including a daring theft of Doc's Mercedes, hence Baby's debt to Doc. The next day, as the crew executes their plan, a suspicious onlooker keeps an eye on them. JD hands off the responsibility to Bats and Eddie and Baby cues up his music. When they return, the suspicious man attempts to intervene, ramming their car and opening fire with his arsenal of weapons. Clearly experienced, perhaps military, he's a formidable adversary, but Baby skillfully evades him. After a high-speed chase and a dramatic maneuver, the pursuer crashes spectacularly. Caught in traffic, the crew swiftly hijacks another car, unbothered by the presence of a baby inside. After switching vehicles in a parking lot, they split up. Baby returns to find JD ominously missing, presumed dead. Baby and Doc transfer the loot to their car. Doc hands Baby some cash, declaring his debt paid but insisting on one final job involving disposing of JD's body. As the car containing JD's body is crushed, memories of Baby's traumatic past flood back. Later at Bo's diner, Baby reconnects with Deborah. Their conversation turns to music, and she sings into his recorder, their connection deepening. When Deborah inquires about Baby's mother, he admits she no longer does anything, suggesting her passing. Their conversation drifts to their lives and dreams and they plan a date. Back home, Baby shares his happiness about Deborah with Joe, announcing he's done with his criminal life. Joe suggests Baby take up a job delivering pizzas, a role that would bring joy through his driving skills. Baby's first delivery impresses with its speed. On their date, Baby and Deborah enjoy their time until Doc interrupts by paying their bill, signaling his control and summoning Baby for another job. 
Despite Baby's refusal, Doc threatens him, leaving no choice but to comply, dampening the mood. Unable to disclose the situation to Deborah, their conversation hints at deeper feelings. The next day, Doc instructs Baby on a reconnaissance mission at the post office with his nephew Sam to appear less suspicious. Sam provides all the necessary details effortlessly. Back at home, Baby cancels plans with Deborah, hinting at his entanglement with Doc but expressing his dream of a spontaneous, free-spirited journey west with her. She agrees, hopeful about their future. Gathering for the new job, Baby finds camaraderie with Buddy over music and cars, while tension with Bats escalates over his simplistic view of driving. As plans solidify for the heast, Darling plots against Bats, revealing the perilous dynamics within the crew. As they proceed, the undercurrents of their relationships and the looting job suggest impending conflict. The ordeal escalates rapidly. Bats, always the instigator, fires the first shot, sparking an intense shootout. Baby narrowly escapes getting hit, saved by Bats in the nick of time. Although they manage to subdue the opposition, Darling is wounded in the hand. Amid the chaos, accusations fly between Darling, Buddy, and Bats, with the latter justifying his actions by revealing the hidden law enforcement identity of their adversaries, spotted by the APD markings he saw. As they flee, Bats makes a dramatic exit by lobbing a grenade into the car of a would-be escapee, ensuring no tails as they speed off the scene. Bats, driven by impulse and hunger, demands they stop at Boo's Diner, a place Baby desperately wants to avoid for personal reasons. Despite Baby's protests that the diner is supper, Bats insists, sensing there's more to Baby's reluctance. Inside, the tension is palpable. Deborah, working her shift, immediately senses something is wrong from Baby's troubled demeanor and the dangerous look of his companions. During their interaction, Bats, ever perceptive, deduces Buddy's past life as a debt-ridden stockbroker turned criminal, a revelation that unsettles Buddy but is smoothed over by Darling's ominous warning about Buddy's temper. A close call occurs when Bats, suspecting Baby's familiarity with Deborah, nearly escalates to violence but Baby manages a covert communication with her, slipping a napkin with a message about a planned escape at 2 a.m. This subtle exchange sets a plan in motion, though fraught with risk. Back at their hideout, Tension mounts as Doc realizes the usual confirmation code, bananas, wasn't used, signaling something went awry. Bats fabricates a story about their attackers firing first, a lie buddy corroborates, but Doc, aware of the true nature of the cops as his plants, calls off the operation and orders a retreat. Bats resists, suggesting they confront the storm brewing around them. In a tense vote, the decision to proceed with another dubious deal rests on Baby, who reluctantly agrees. The evening spirals further as Baby, trying to sneak away, is caught by Bodhi who gives him an ultimatum about his involvement. The situation deteriorates when Bats discovers Baby's recorder, leading to accusations of espionage and a confrontation that reveals Baby's habit of recording conversations for his music. This misunderstanding culminates in a tense moment where Baby's tapes are exposed, risking everything he cares about, including Joe, who is ominously presented in his wheelchair by Bats. Despite these trials, Baby is forcefully reinstated as the driver for the next job by his own insistence, proving his indispensability. Meanwhile, Deborah waits unaware of the full extent of Baby's predicament. The following day, the crew's dynamics fracture during the heist at the post office. As they execute their plan, a critical moment comes when Baby, unable to continue in the criminal chaos, deliberately crashes into a truck, fatally injuring Bats. The aftermath is chaotic. Buddy and Darling scramble as the police close in, leading to a fierce shootout. Baby's agility and desperation shine as he flees on foot, leading to a frantic escape through a mall and ultimately, a hasty car theft. Baby's escape is hampered when he crashes into a truck occupied by Buddy and Darling. As the police engage, the scene turns deadly. In the chaos, Darling is shot, unleashing Buddy's wrath. Baby, seizing a momentary distraction, grabs the money and flees, only to face another confrontation with Buddy. After a tense moment searching for the perfect escape track on a stolen car's radio, Baby finally drives off, only to return to a home turned upside down, and Joe in peril. Baby swiftly gathers his cash, secreting it in Joe's jacket for safekeeping, and calls Boo Steiner. The cook answers, and Baby leaves a simple message for Deborah. Baby's coming. He then scoops up another of his numerous iPods and assists Joe into a car, choosing a different vehicle for their escape. He drives Joe to a senior care facility, leaving a recorded message detailing his care instructions. As the Atlanta Police Department helicopter illuminates their location with its spotlight, Baby ensures Joe is safe before making a quick escape. Arriving at Bo's diner, Baby is intent on rescuing Deborah but finds Buddy waiting for him. The television broadcasts the faces of Darling and Bats, now confirmed dead while Buddy grieving and vengeful, 
brandishes a pistol at Deborah. He questions Beatty about his feelings for her just as police officers casually enter the diner. Despite the tension, Beatty manages to seize a moment to shoot Buddy during a distraction. Beatty and Deborah make a quick exit, pursued by the police. Despite the chaos, Deborah declares her decision to stay with Baby, and together they flee. Meanwhile, Buddy, though wounded, drags a police officer down with him in a desperate act of defiance. As they strategize their next steps, Baby contacts Doc for help but is met with rejection. They spot a red Mustang, and Baby, ever the adept carjacker, commandeers it as their getaway vehicle. They meet with Doc, who initially refuses to return Baby's tapes. However, upon seeing Deborah, his demeanor softens and he not only gives Baby the tapes but also a bag of money, revealing his actions are driven by his own romantic past. Suddenly, they are ambushed by gunmen. Doc sacrifices himself to allow Baby and Deborah to escape, confronting the gunmen and ultimately facing Booty, who has improbably survived. In a cinematic showdown, Baby and Booty exchange gunfire and vehicular maneuvers, culminating in Booty's death after a dramatic confrontation. Deborah and Baby then find temporary respite, with Baby waking up to Deborah playing his mother's tape, symbolizing a moment of peace. However, their freedom is short-lived as they encounter a police roadblock. Baby decides to surrender, opting to protect Deborah from further involvement in his chaotic world. In court, various characters from Baby's story testify on his behalf, reflecting his positive impacts on their lives. Despite this, he is sentenced to 25 years with the possibility of parole in five. The film closes on a hopeful note with Deborah's promise of a future together, encapsulating the enduring power of their bond. This thrilling narrative, blending intense action with deep emotional currents, underscores themes of redemption, love, and the quest for freedom against the backdrop of unrelenting danger and moral complexity.